with you. We come to celebrate God's tremendous love for us as church. We've celebrated and shared so much today. And we come to these sacred mysteries knowing that it is God's love that compels us. But we come also knowing our frailty, our weakness. The many ways that we have sought our own will and not His will. Let us pause, reflect, and ask for mercy. I confess, mighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
not without persecution. Now in this present time and in the world to come, eternal life. Many who are first will be last and the last first. The Gospel of the Lord. Many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be, will be first. Our readings today are speaking about the quality of sacrifice. Gospel reading, Peter is saying, well, what about us? We sacrificed everything for you. And in Jesus' response, it's not about what was sacrificed because you will get back wife and husband and house and car and these things in this world. What is it about? In our first reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus, it says it about three or four times. It says it in the positive and then it says it in the negative. A man multiplies offerings by keeping the law. Man multiplies his offerings by keeping the law. Then he goes to the next level. He offers communion sacrifice by following commandments. Keeping the law, following commandments. It's going up. Huh? By showing gratitude, he makes an offering of fine flour. This has gone to the higher level. Keeping the law, following the commandments, gratitude. You all with me so far? Yes. Gratitude. Then it goes on, by giving arms, giving, he offers a sacrifice of praise. We come up again. Remember Father Peter this morning talked about contrition, gratitude, and compassion as his three whole marks of the spiritual life. And we see them here. Keeping the law, that's good, important. Keeping the commandments, that's important. Gratitude. Arms giving, that's another level, another level of sacrifice. And then it comes, the text goes on to say, do not appear, withdraw from wickedness and the Lord will be pleased. Withdraw. So this is a negative now. Turn away from wickedness, turn away from injustice and you will make atonement. Do not appear empty-handed before the Lord's presence, for all these things are due under the commandment. And then it goes to the virtuous man's offering, and it says it again, and it says it again. There's one part here where it says, a virtuous man's sacrifice is acceptable, his memorial will not be forgotten. Honor the Lord with generosity. Add a smiling face to your gift. How about that one? Huh? Add a what? Sacrifice has been a constant theme through every religious tradition. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, we know we have the four. It ends with them being put out of the garden and the angels being put to guard them from going back in. Chapter 4, we start with Adam and Eve conceiving their children. And verse 3 of chapter 4, it just shifts and says that Cain, Abel, made a wholehearted sacrifice of his firstlings, and he also offered the fat of his animals. Cain offered some of his produce. From the moment sin came into the world, sacrifice came into the world also. And the first thing that we learn about sacrifice is that you can offer a wholehearted sacrifice, as Abel does, or you can offer, as the book of Ecclesiastes says, a stingy sacrifice. 
Right? The wholehearted sacrifice or stingy sacrifice. Sometimes we think that the greatest sacrifice that we're called to make is the sacrifice of our money or of our time. Those are big sacrifices, correct? Correct? Sometimes it's hard to give it, and you know which one harder to give than all of that? The hardest sacrifice to give is the one that we see Jesus giving on the night before he died in the garden of Gethsemane. He knelt down, he sweated blood and tears, and he said, Father, take this. Take this chalice away from me, but not, but, but your will be done. And now we have what is a wholehearted sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son into the world that we might have life. It's a sacrifice of a father who's sacrificing himself by giving us his son, knowing how we will treat him. The sacrifice of a son who is giving to his father everything and giving us love. The whole heart of sacrifice is a love offering. It's a love offering because it's not holding back anything to himself. It's a difficult offering because it's costly. It's costly. The bending of our heart to the will of God is costly. And that sacrifice, brothers and sisters, we are all capable of making it every single day, every single moment, in every single day. Amen? I ain't sure about that one. Let me try again now. Amen? Amen. All right. We spent the day looking at leadership and discernment. And in spending this day looking at leadership and discernment, what we are recognizing is that whereas we might have been willing to give some money and we might have been willing to give some time, are we willing to give the hard stuff, the real hard stuff? You know the old, the old conversation between the chicken and the, and the pig, they're heading down the road one day and they stopped and the chicken said, and I feel real hungry, let's have some breakfast. The pig said, me too. So went in a place and said, well, what you're serving is, said, well, we're serving bacon and eggs. chicken said, well, I find that's good. The pig said, you are right, yes. For you, that's only an offering. For me, that's the whole hog. <laughs> if we're going to be the church that God wants us to be, a church of discernment, a church where we're putting God's will first, we can't be chicken about it. We've been happy to offer our offering to the Lord. And now we have to be ready, willing, and able to go to another level of discipleship. You have to be ready to offer the whole hog. What is hardest to offer? What is harder to offer than to bend your will to God's will? Can you think of anything harder than that? Anything? Anything at all? What if you might imagine if we make a culture? sacrifice that is wholehearted that in every moment of every day we are willing and choosing to bend our heart to God's will in things that are little and things that are great in Ephesians 5 that wonderful text about marriage St. Paul actually starts off and most people don't quote it by saying husbands and wives husbands and wives Submit yourselves to one another in the Lord. What does that mean? It means that husbands and wives put God first and then you surrender to the will of God and to each other for the sake of the will of God. And that is what discipleship is really about. And that's what spiritual leadership is about. 
And that's what discernment and spiritual leadership is about. Discerning the will of God in things little and big and bending our heart towards that, no matter what it costs. Peter and the disciples are all in awe about what they've given up. Lord, what, look at what we have given up. Yes, and they gave up a lot. But you know it's possible to give up all of those things and not bend your heart to the will of God. Possible to give all those things and not bend your heart to the will of God. The greatest riches is not necessarily in wealth you know, or in opulence. Sometimes the greatest riches is in our ego and our ego position and the ego position that we defend like a raging bull no matter what. That sometimes is our greatest treasure, the eye. And what Jesus is inviting us today in this day of discernment and leadership is recognizing that I must die so that he can live. And if I must die that he can live, I need his grace. Amen? Amen. I need his grace. Say it again. I need his grace. As we in this Mass, let us pray for everyone in leadership in our church. Those who are here, those who are not here. That we may have the grace to bend to him. That we may surrender ourselves to the will of our God. In things both little and in great. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and bring our needs, our petitions, our desires before God. God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed for His will. It is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We pray for the whole church on this similar journey. Led by Pope Francis and the bishops, that as the glorified Christ lets fall his promised Holy Spirit, that the strong wind of his coming may surge through our church to renew and rekindle in each family and every person his holy fire. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our church here in Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean, gathered as the people of God, laity, religious, ecclesial movements, and clergy, that as we seek to build community, inclusivity, and dialogue, the Lord may bring conversion to our hearts in the midst of our strife, division, pain, fractal relationships, and unforgiveness. We pray that the seed sown here may bear much fruit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Father Peter MacIsaac, who celebrates his 25th anniversary, and for Father Jason Utsun, who celebrates his 14th anniversary of priestly ordination. We pray that their pastoral ministries continue to be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that God's will be accomplished. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our families, commissioned by the Spirit, 
to be a ferment in society for the kingdom of God. And the Spirit may empower our families to be a witness to Christ's love and reconciliation in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are experiencing new stirrings of the Holy Spirit in their lives, calls to change and growth, movements of repentance, even earthquakes of divine disturbance, that they may not quench or sadden the loving spirit who awakens within them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our leaders in government, that they may work together in wisdom and love with sound judgment for the common good of all, remembering also individuals and businesses struggling financially, that the Spirit may show us the way and open our hearts in solidarity to support each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray that the Spirit may be an anointing of comfort to those who grieve, healing to the sick, calm to the anxious, strength for the weak, peace for those at war, forgiveness to sinners, unity in our divided lives, and refreshment to us all on our pilgrim way. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for our faithful departed, that they may share the gift and the promise of Christ in eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayer of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in thee, we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray that your sacrifice and mine may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your servant, O God, of all compassion, and bestow on them the grace of your light, that they may have a true understanding of what is right in your eyes, and bodily carry it out through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For you bestow gifts suited to every season, and guide the governing of your church in wondrous ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid so that with a heart always subject to you, he may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble or cease to give you thanks in time of joy. Through Christ our Lord and so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
the Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, Lord, but look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
pray your merciful God that the holy gifts that we have received may confirm your servants in the truth and prompt them to seek the honor of your name through Christ our Lord. Let's be seated for a moment. How was it? Then? What I hope you see is you're making a journey as church. Yeah? That's what synodality is walking together towards where Christ is leading us. And today was a wonderful day. I really want to thank the two uh, anniversary priests for throwing this big party and inviting us for their anniversary. Happy anniversary again. Happy anniversary. 25 years and 14 years is quite something. Eh? Quite something. The church gathers like this twice a year. And so we can mark our diaries from year to year now. On Indian Arrival Day, we gather like this, except as a Saturday or Sunday. And uh, we also will gather on the Saturday before Christ the King. And that's the time when the church comes together and deserves again where we are and where we go forward. This gathering is where we come together in formation and looking to see how, what we need as church to lead to the next stage. Amen? So you can put it in your calendars from now. Don't tell me when the time comes or we didn't know, you already know. Amen? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and preach the gospel by you.